All right, we're talking today about um, scent control for whitetail hunting, and uh, this is by no means I'm not an expert on the subject, um, but I just want to share some things with you um, guys that might help you possibly. Um, this is like scent control tips uh, if you're on a budget. And the first thing I do is um, wash all my clothes. I just happen to use this um, scent killer gold. You can use any any hunting detergent probably work good, but I just use that. I, I wash all my clothes in that. Um, <coughs> even, you know, long underwear, socks, you know, pants, shirts, jackets, everything, hats, gloves. Um, start off with washing all of my hunting stuff in that. And then I store it. <coughs> I just have a bag here. This happens to be just Hunter's Specialty. Deluxe scent safe travel bag. Again, you can get these. I think Dead Down Wind makes the orange one. I do need to buy another one because that one's that one's um, wearing out, and I, pro I probably I cram so much stuff in there. I probably should buy an extra one. But again, those are twenty or thirty dollars. I need to keep everything there. And then when everything is in there, um, <coughs> I actually uh, put a pack of these Hunter Specialties. Um, fresh earth cover scent wafers in the bag. So I wash them in the scent free detergent, hang them up on the line, and then I put these cover scent wafers, this happens to be fresh earth, in there. And um, what that does is your clothes just soak up, all your clothes smell like, like fresh earth. So it's kind of a cover scent too. So I try to get rid of the human scent by washing them first, and then, um, then I just I leave them in there at least a couple weeks before the season and they get everything um, smelling like fresh earth. So the morning of my hunt, um, I'll, I'll take a shower in um, um, scent free, like a hunter detergent uh, soap and shampoo. <clears throat> I need to get myself clean. And then um, I also use, I found some stuff on sale quite a long time ago. 15 or so years ago. Um, it's just that, uh, like scent lock. I have a scent lock shirt I found. Except for one that goes right under my base layer. <coughs> I'll wear that um, as well. And then I also found a head, a head net that covers your whole neck, your head. You can pull it up over your um, nose and mouth too so your breath doesn't get exposed. All you can see is basically your eyes. Um, I have one of those as well. And again, that's um, made of that scent lock material, which activated carbon, which you can activate in your dryer for 30 or 40 minutes. Um, so those are the two pieces of scent lock stuff I have. Um, I'm a pretty big believer in, the, in the covering your head and your hair and your facial hair. Um, so a deer can't smell that. I think that's pretty, pretty important. And uh, also I happen to wear, I have a separate bag for that. <coughs> Basically, it's just like a big uh, Ziploc bag, basically. Um, so I keep just all my 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 um, scent lock stuff, my head covering, my shirt, and also I have, a, I have a, if it's warm out, I have a ball cap too. That's also a scent lock hat too. So, uh, I keep that separate. I do not soak that in the, uh, in the other bag with the scent wafers. And then um, also I just I wear rubber boots too. Um, I don't spray my boots per se, but for whitetails, I just wear that one pair of rubber boots. I don't put them on until I'm at my hunting spot. You know, I don't go to the gas station with them on or stuff like that. Um, so, okay, another thing I do is um, I make sure to wash my safety harness. I used to hunt, uh, bring a backpack in when I went in. Now I just bought a fanny pack, but um, I'll put my safety harness system um, inside either your backpack or my fanny pack and I'll wash that so your, your backpack your fanny pack is getting washed and then your your safety harness is inside it so it's not clinking around so, so bad in your, in your washer um, but I'll make sure to wash that as well <clears throat> and then after after my hunt whatever clothes I wear you know I might have three or four pairs of you know of everything in that, that green bag <clears throat> after my hunt I will just um, wash those again in the, in the set free soap detergent and then I'll dry them out and I'll put them back in the, um, in the, in the scent, scent safe bag.
and so the uh, fresh earth will, will again go back back into the garments. And two um, two weather apps that I have on my phone for hunting. I like to look at two of them. One is Hunt Stand, and that's a free app you can get. Um, and also then Scout Look. Scout Look is another uh, free app. Um, I use those for wind direct, basically for, you know, to see how to dress for the day and also for wind direction. And um, obviously I try to, as much as possible, I try to access uh, my spots going into the wind. So um, keeping the wind at your face as much as possible or keeping the wind in a direction that uh, you don't think the deer will be coming from. <clears throat> so you can spook, um, educate as few deer as possible. Another thing I started doing this uh, year was to use milkweed as my wind indicator. Um, I just found a patch of milkweed and uh, grabbed a bunch of pods. Uh, most of them are dry, dried out, and um, that's a great thing. I just keep it in a little a Ziploc sandwich bag in my fanny pack. And when you're hunting hill country, I was primarily hunted northern Wisconsin growing up and around here in central Wisconsin, which is mostly flat. Um, but so hunting in the, all those hills is kind of new for me in the last couple of three or four years. So having that milkweed is really helpful. I used to use a, a little white powder wind indicator. You squeeze it and you could see that for maybe five, six, seven feet and then it kind of disappears. But the milkweed is great because then you can really pull a little chunk of uh, milkweed out of there, let it go, and you can watch it for quite a ways. You can see how the, exactly how, where your scent is going and how the wind is swirling and, and how it reacts in those, <coughs> those hills, and <coughs> hills and valleys. So, um, I have, and it's free, so um, the price is right there as well. Uh, another thing I've had success with, um, actually this season, um, I got two bucks within bow range and I used, um, on the downwind side of me, I'll hang um, Estra scent um, I like to use Tink's original Don Estrus, uh, Tink 69, and I'll hang it upwind 20, 30 yards upwind of me. And so if a deer, you know, sometimes those deer like to, you, you think they're going to come in one way, but they end up coming in from a different direction. So if they do wind you, um, I had, I had luck two different times, two different, uh, eight pointers came in. Um, the one that came in to the, uh, to the scent, but I didn't I put it downwind of me. I said I made a mistake. I put it 15 yards downwind, and the deer hung up at 30 yards. He's behind a tree anyway. Couldn't get a shot. But next time I went out, I made sure to, to hang that upwind of you, uh, 20 or 30 yards, and the deer have to. If they do smell that scent and investigate, uh, the bucks will come in, and they'll have to walk by your stand. And the the buck that I shot this year, um, he was he came in from downwind. And so I, apparently I was doing enough taking care of my clothes, making sure I was scent free. And I think the cover, the earth, earth scent, cover scent helped also. But uh, apparently it didn't, it must have minimized my human order enough. And uh, that he was interested in, in that estrus scent and he came right in and gave me, his nose is right, actually two inches away from my, my scent wick. So I'll hang three or four scent wicks. Um, again, upwind of my spot. I don't try to do that on purpose, you know, I'll try to set up and go in on a spot where the wind's in my favor, but I figure it can't hurt to put some scent out because if that way if they, they do come in, um, if I wasn't using any extra scent, they wouldn't really have a reason to, to come in and investigate. So I feel that, um, that that's helpful as well. Um, I've had lots of success, even 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 with does coming in. I've had does come in to Estra's scent um, as well um, from directly downwind. So um, I know they have that um, that stuff in a, the orange can. Um, I forgot what they call it. Um, it's a it's a sweet smelling stuff they have, and that's like a cover scent too. And it's something I found uh, in natural plants or substances, but it's magnified a lot. Um, so I know people do use cover So I'm, I'm a pretty big believer in, in cover scents, um, but I still try to minimize my human scent um, as much as possible and then use, use a, 
a fresh earth cover scent, and then also during the rut, they use a pester scent. Uh, in a pastor's sermon at church, um, one verse that kind of stuck with me was um, uh, 2 Peter 1, um, excuse me, 2 Peter 2, 17. It says, Show proper respect to everyone, love the brotherhood of believers, fear God, and honor the king. Um, I was just kind of praising God for that he's a God of order, and uh, God is not a God of disorder. Um, he is a God of order, and uh, <clears throat> this um, I just kind of thought of our country and our um, our society today in the United States and around the world. But it says show proper respect to everyone. Um, just a basic thing that um, that people seem to struggle with, and then it says love the brotherhood of believers. So um, love other people in Christ, and uh, just love brother other brothers and sisters in Christ. And then the fear of God, that doesn't mean <clears throat> you're scared of God. Um, that means you have a deep reverence and a deep awe, like you're in awe of God. And you have a uh, reverence uh, for God. And then honor the king. Um, we are to honor people, government, or leaders that are um, you know, over us, or an authority over us. Um, as long as they're not... Um, doing things that are going against God's will, or as we're to honor them and pray for them. And um, <clears throat> and that is sometimes uh, sometimes missing in our society. Whether it's, I happen to work at a school, whether it's at a school, and um, and um, students aren't, aren't um, respecting authority, or whether it's uh, a person in a community that's not respecting a police officer, whether, it, uh, whether you're at work, and you're not um, submitting to your boss, so that can um, um, that can show itself many different ways. But uh, I just thought that was an awesome verse <coughs> as a reminder um, of how God wants us to live. Uh, that verse I just referenced, actually, that was First uh, Peter two, uh, verse seventeen. Uh, I said Second Peter, but it was First Peter two seventeen. But um, um, you know, when I think of kids. I think of um, Ephesians 6 1, which says, uh, Children obey your parents and the Lord. And, uh, and that is just, a, that's just an awesome thing. Starting uh, again at a young age, um, you know, God is a God of order. And uh, so he puts parents in charge of children. And uh, you're to obey, <coughs> obey your parents. It's something simple, but again, something, um, something we see parents struggling with. Um, in our communities and in our, in our country today. So if God is a God of order, um, why do you see on the news or uh, you go anywhere in public and you see, uh, you know, you see disorder. You see it in our nation's leaders, you know, our, our country's leaders. You, you see it on the news. Why do you see disorder? Um, well, <clears throat> it's because of Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. And um, after that, all of mankind are, are born into sin. So we have a sin nature that we're we just born into, and uh, but God, in His perfectness and in, because He loves us so much, sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, came down with the perfect life for us, and He provided a way for us to be pardoned from our sins uh, or forgiven, forgiven for our sins, and um, but we have to repent. We have to come to a place where. Um, you realize that maybe your life is in total disorder. Um, um, you know, maybe you've hit rock bottom with something. Uh, <clears throat> maybe you haven't. But but God made a way uh, for you to live uh, um, with Him forever. Um, if you repent from your sins, that means turn away from your sins and turn towards Jesus and ask Him into your life. Um, um, so that's... Um, so that, that's, again, God putting order into something that was, um, you know, Adam and Eve made a mistake, they sinned. Um, all of mankind now, we're born into sin, but, but God made a way, uh, a way for us to get right with him again through Jesus. And if that's uh, something new to you, or you've never heard that before, um, 
the book of John, if you read the book of John, and it's in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the fourth book, uh, the book of John is a great way to start to learn about salvation and uh, what what is it, what being a Christian means. So I encourage you um, to start out reading the book of John. So being a Christian doesn't mean that you're not going to have um, hard times, hardships, and crisis um, in, in your life. It's not it's not like you hit the easy button. Um, you're going to have hard times still. Uh, in John 16.33, says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. This is Jesus talking. Um, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay, so <clears throat> Jesus himself tells us that we're going to have trouble um, in this world um, because of the battle uh, that we have with sin. And um, But... Um, in, in Him, in Jesus, we may have peace. Um, in this world, we're having trouble, but you can take heart because He has over, overcame the world. So what do we need to do to uh, have that peace and keep that peace in our hearts um, amidst troubles and trials that uh, we are all going to go through? Um, Hebrews 12, 2 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And that Again, in Him, we can have peace. Um, and not in our circumstances, but through Jesus, we can have have peace. Um, we've got to keep our eyes fixed on Him. And uh, again, to do that is to get in the Word, read God's Word on a, on a daily basis, and, and through prayer as well. Yeah, but um, I just thought I'd share that, guys, with you. Till next time, stay on target. Bye.